إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن إبراهيم كان أمة الآية صدق الله العظيم We give praise and thanks to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most high the one who bestows favors, mercy, kindness, compassion upon us. As believers, it is our nature. It is our, a sign of our faith. It is a testimony of our belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, that we recognize that every blessing, every virtue, every ability to do good, every ability to refrain from evil, only happens and occurs by the will and permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power, no might, no strength, no will except from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is why our religion, Islam, literally means to submit to the will and command of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That in spite of our efforts or intentions, doing good, and refraining from evil. Every action performed only occurs by the will and permission of Allah. So we praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We glorify the name of Allah. In our hearts, the name of Allah rings supreme as the most noble, the most high, the most authoritative, the mightiest, the most powerful name echoes in our hearts the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we praise Allah, we glorify, we elevate the, the, the name of Allah azza wa jal. We revere and we respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we recognize our status in relation to Allah azza wa jal, that Allah is completely independent of us and we solely depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all our needs. When we understand this and we internalize this concept that yes, I work, yes, I have a job, yes, I have, I make sacrifices, I strive, but nothing comes to me except by the permission and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we internalize this concept and we understand this, then all our gratitude is given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts become filled with thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We feel indebted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recognize the need to serve and worship and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this time, the society that we live in, is asking the question, what are you thankful for? What is dear to be thankful for in your life? Thus bringing to the forefront the discussion of gratitude. How is gratitude expressed? Who has the right to receive gratitude or to demand gratitude? What should we be thankful for? As Muslims, ultimately, our religion, our deen of Islam teaches us that all praise and gratitude are for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Yes, we are grateful to the means and the ways that Allah used to bring His blessings to us. We be kind to those around us, those whom Allah has used to bring His blessings to us. We appreciate, we be grateful, but our gratitude extends beyond that. Our sense of gratitude is divine, it is supreme, 
it goes beyond the mere humans around us. The mere means and ways, it goes to the source of the blessings. We thank Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise and thank Allah Azza wa Jal for His blessings. In Alhamdulillah, all praise and gratitude are from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If someone is to ask you, and this was a question posed to prophets in the past, how would you introduce, or who is who is Allah? Now you place in a situation where you're required to introduce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Musa alayhi salam when Musa alayhi salam approached Fir'aun one of the questions he asked وَمَرْ رَبُّكُمَا يَا مُوسَى who is your lord O Musa because Musa and Harun alayhi salam came alayhi salam they both approached Fir'aun and he asked them who is this lord that you speak about who is Allah who is your Lord, the one that you're telling, you're telling me to worship? If we're posed with that same question, how do we introduce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We might find many qualities, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Khaliq, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir, all the names of Allah, the names and attributes. But one that we don't hear very often is the quality of Allah, Al-Shakur. In Surah Taghabun, towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Himself, even though He's the master of the creator and the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the producer of every blessing, every ni'mah, every fruit, every favor. He is the one who is the benefactor. He gives the blessings unto everything. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describes him, describing Himself, in this surah as Wallahu Shakurun Haleem and Allah is grateful. Allah describes himself as grateful. And this is fascinating that the one who is in charge of every blessing, the one responsible for every the nurturing of every creation, the one who gives us air, the one who gives us the permission to live, the one who keeps our hearts beating and our lungs pumping oxygen through our body, the one who gives us life in itself, the one who gives life to everything. As Musa salam introduced Allah, he said, رَبُّنَا الَّذِي أَعْطَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلْقَهُ My Lord is the one who gave everything its existence. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet Allah himself, Allah azza wa jal, is describing himself. One of his favors, one of his names, one of his qualities is Wallahu Shakurun Haleem Allah is grateful and kind this shows that being gr grateful is not simply something that we express by saying thank you but gratitude in itself is a divine quality gratitude is a quality of Allah Azza wa Jal it is from the divine attributes it is something that Allah has chosen for himself so it is indeed special when, when we, the mere humans, the creation of Allah, can internalize and express gratitude from within ourselves. When we understand who we are supposed to thank. This is when we develop the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indicated to us that we should adopt. From his qualities, Allah has chosen gratitude as one of the qualities. So the scholars explain what is it that, what it means that Allah is grateful. How does Allah express gratitude? We can thank Allah. We say, thank you for my life, O oh Allah. Thank you for giving me the ni'mah of Islam. Thank you for giving me the ability to walk, to talk, to see, to hear. We have things to thank Allah for. Now who does Allah thank and how does Allah thank? What is the gratitude of Allah? What is the definition of it? The scholars of Tafsir explain under the, the, the explanation of this verse that Allah is grateful in the sense that in spite of our mistakes, our wrongdoings, the little that we do, the one action here and the one action there, 
the one dollar in charity <coughs> the simple actions Allah gave us everything that we need for a little in return we give a little we give an ounce and Allah gave us a ton we give one salah and Allah gave us air and blood and oxygen for the entire day we give one dollar in charity and Allah gave us salaries and jobs and the ability to survive and food to eat we give a little and Allah is shakur Allah is so grateful so so much filled with gratitude so thankful teaching us a lesson here Allah gives us much more than we deserve this is the gratitude of Allah that Allah is an exact with us and we're not even discussing the mistakes that we make because that, that in itself is a form of gratitude from Allah where we make mistakes and Allah overlook the mistakes we make mistakes on a daily basis we neglect our duties to Allah on a daily basis yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deprive us of our basic needs we have not done the basic but Allah was an exact with us Allah didn't keep back some of our sustenance Allah didn't keep back some of our ear to breathe Allah didn't keep back some of our abilities our physical faculties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them to us in spite of our shortcomings in spite of our little actions that we perform in spite of our deficiencies this is the gratitude of Allah this is the meaning of shakur Allah is the most grateful so this is a quality that we don't hear about much often but it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for himself so when our society describes and, and search for something to be thankful for a believer is always thankful a believer always recognizes the, the blessings and mercy and kindness of Allah because the opposite the opposite of shukr is kufr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran what do, what do we get in return for, for gratitude? And right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what is the opposite of gratitude. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim La'in shakartum la'azidannakum wa la'in kafartum fa'inna azabi lashadeed That if you give thanks to me, if you thank Allah, if you're grateful to Allah, then I will increase you in blessings. On the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you fail to be thankful, which means you are ungrateful. And the word that Allah uses for ungrateful is, wala in kafartum. If you choose to be ungrateful, kafara, from the word kufr, kafir, disbeliever. So it is the nature of the believer to have shukr. And it is the nature of the kafir to adopt an attitude of kufr, which means that the believer should constantly strive and look for ways to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, we're drifting into the attitude of the kafir. If we don't adopt the attitude of the Muslim, the one who is grateful to Allah, then we're drifting into the one the attitude and the, the, the disposition of the kafir, the one who is ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word kufr, disbelief. The word kufr is derived from kafara, which means to be ungrateful, because kufr, rejecting or not wor worshipping Allah or worshipping something else besides Allah, is the highest form of ingratitude. And it is a description given to those who have left or those who choose to neglect the way of Islam and practice something else. <coughs> Which is why the believer should always adopt an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of showing thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an attitude of seeking out the blessings of Allah in our lives. Stop focusing on the blessings of others. Allah, the Prophet ﷺ told us, he told us in the hadith, "Unzuru ila man huwa asfal minkum, wala tanzuru ila man huwa fawqakum." Don't stretch your gaze to those who are higher in blessings than you. 
Some people might have received more worldly blessings than you yourself. The Prophet says, look at those who have less than you. Focus on the ones who have less blessings than you have. This will bring more gratitude into your heart. But we look at the blessings of those who have maybe more or what we desire to have. Who knows if they have more? Allah knows best. But we look, we stretch our gaze to that. And our heart yearns. And shaitan capitalizes on that. Why couldn't you have that? You, should, you deserve that. You have done so much. And shaitan boosts our egos. And our nafs, our desires. And suddenly we are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. As believers, each and every one of us, by default, whether blessings are in our lives or not, the fact that we're sitting here today in this blessed maqam, in this blessed place, on this blessed day, listening to this reminder about the greatness of Allah, this in itself is sufficient to render us more rewarded, more blessed than the rest of Allah's creation who were not given this blessing. This is a testimony that Allah has given us His greatest gift, the gift of Islam, the gift of Iman. Something that brings us, brings us prosperity in this life and prosperity in the hereafter. Everlasting bliss, everlasting happiness, if we embrace it. So let us not be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by rejecting the blessings of Allah. Let us not be ungrateful by thinking that we are deprived and Allah has not given us when Allah has blessed us with some of His greatest blessings. We have been given the kalima la ilaha illallah, which is a passport to Jannah. We have been given the honor of being from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A blessing, a ni'mah, which will, will, which will shine bright on the day of Qiyamah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will invite us a special place will be formed for us to meet the Prophet ﷺ and drink from Al Kawthar. Focus on these blessings. It is not a simple thing that you're seated here today with that kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah in your minds and in your hearts. It is from the greatest blessings of Allah. So by default, Muslims are sh- or should be Muslims should be the most grateful people. And firstly, our gratitude goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that if you do not show gratitude to the people around you, you don't show gratitude to the human beings, the ones who Allah has used to bring blessings to you, the ones who are kind to you, the ones who are, who are pleasant to you, you don't be great, you don't be kind to them as well. You don't show gratitude to them, you don't say thank you you don't appreciate, then you have in turn shown ingratitude and ungratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it doesn't mean that we neglect and we say, I don't need to thank you, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means that we thank the, the means of the blessing coming to us. Someone was kind to us, someone helped us, someone was pleasant to you. Give thanks to those around you as well. This is part of our deen. This is our, our, our nature. As Muslims, we're grateful. We don't take things for granted. We don't look down upon anyone. We don't, we don't overlook the small blessings. Rather, we seek out the blessings to appreciate them. So at this time, when the world is discussing gratitude, or our society at least, is discussing, is, is discussing thankfulness and gratitude and what to be thankful for, as Muslims, let us understand that gratitude is ingrained into our deen, our daily lives. It is part of who we are. Without it, we don't, our identity is lost. As I explained, the opposite of shukr is kufr. The description of the believers is that they are filled with gratitude. The description of the disbelievers is that they have committed the highest level of ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us not be ungrateful to Allah. Let us recognize the blessings of Allah in our lives. And let us be grateful to Allah by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot say I am grateful, but I have not performed my salah. I have not given my my compulsory zakah. I have not performed the necessary hajj. 
we cannot neglect the basics of his, the basis of the the simple pillars of Islam, the basic details that we're supposed to perform. We cannot neglect that and claim to be grateful. Claim to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the poet says, Ta'asil ilaha wa hubba. We, d- we claim to love Allah and we disobey Him on the other side. This is indeed a strange occurrence. The poet says, we claim to love Allah. You ask any believer, he will say, I love Allah, I would die for Islam. And then, he disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is indeed a strange occurrence. Meaning, it doesn't go together. If we claim to be grateful to Allah, then let us start by doing the most basic responsibility of a believer and that is establishing our five daily salah in its correct time if we claim to be grateful to Allah let us start by establishing our five pillars in our deen let us give the necessary charity in fact the the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as being grateful that verse actually speaks about giving charity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran من ذا الذي يقرض الله قرضا حسنا Who is it that will give a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Meaning you spend in the way of Allah You give in the, in the way of charity You help someone in need That is a loan given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فيضاعفه له Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah will multiply it for him والله شكور حليم And Allah is indeed most grateful Most, most kind, most rewarding in return for your blessings, Halim, the most kind, the most compassionate. Let us try to adopt the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described himself with, and that is gratitude and kindness. Let us not allow our desires to blind us to the blessings of Allah present in our lives. The simple blessings of family, of community, of being able to come back to the masjid in su- after such a long time. These are simple things that we, we can take for granted. But as believers, if we soften our hearts and we contemplate for a second, we will recognize how these simple blessings of Allah are so great and significant in our lives. And in turn, we will be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when expressing our gratitude to Allah, let us start by doing the most basic requirement upon a believer. And that is establishing our, our prayer, our five daily salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, we cannot claim gratitude to Allah. We cannot claim to love Allah. We cannot claim to love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we lack it in our salah. We lack it in our zakah, our hajj, our fasting. These are the basic requirements. These are the simple basic requirements. Let us build that up first, so that we can justify our claim that we are grateful to Allah and our claim that we love Allah, we love His Rasul. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأسدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبه أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم 
وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيموا الصلاة